Well, you're watching the final of the UK Open qualifier held at Riley's Victoria. It's an amateur qualifier, and one of these players will be booking their place to play the professionals at Butlin's Minehead at the UK Open in March 2023. Fantastic final in store here between two very talented players. They've been nothing but impressive this afternoon, it has to be said. They've been absolutely brilliant and I've done a lot of these tournaments uh, over the years, uh, especially at Victoria. And I have to say, both White and Gurney have produced some of the best darts that I've seen at uh, a qualifying event such as this. So we're going to tell you a bit more about those players shortly. Best of nine legs in order to replicate the UK Open format of the early rounds and it'll be Gurney who is going to get us underway winning the bullseye. First five legs. They are five legs away potentially from place at Butlin's Minehead in that elite field and a nice ton for Gurney to kick us off. 115 players entered this event, kicked off at one o'clock. This is being filmed at around 8.30. So it's been a, a good day. A long day of course but it's been run really really well and a massive thank you to well firstly to Riley's Victoria for allowing me to film as always always hugely appreciated and to Southeast Darts Promotions who uh, are putting on a lot of ADC events this year do have a look at their Facebook page if you get the chance and Gurney has made an absolutely flying start here and White is going to have to get a foothold in this match pretty quickly hasn't quite found the scoring power that he's had throughout this afternoon so far early stages of course Gurney has been very very impressive in recent weeks could have been at Milton Keynes on this day on which it was filmed one more challenge tour event that took place today that's better from White 108 Oh, Gurney, this is going to be tough to keep up with because they're very fast. Well, he wanted the single 19 there to leave the double, but uh, instead hits a ton and leaves double four. What kind of pressure will he be under? A fair amount, quite possibly. White fills it up. That will uh, settle him down. Double eight, though, for Gurney. He finds it first time. 16 data to kick us off. And a hold of throw, that will settle Gurney's nerves. He is on a bit of a crest of the wave at the moment. He had a very good Q score, didn't win a card of course, which is why he's here. But finished 31st on the order of merit, which is no mean feat really. Six wins in stage one, and a further seven wins in stage two. Standard of that event continues to go up, as we know. Uh, so to get any victories at all is, <laughs> is a very impressive achievement. White didn't go to Q school but did last year and is certainly targeting that in 12 months time. Looks to have settled here in this second leg. Leaves a ton after nine darts. The scoring now is Returned for White, which has got him to this stage. He's been very impressive all day. He's from Oxfordshire. One of the tops, tops there. I'll tell you a bit more about White in the next leg. Gurney will just have to regroup here for the third leg because White has plenty of time on his side. Looks to be a good marker. He's got a very steady throw. Both players have very good techniques, has to be so I appreciate that's possibly stating the obvious, but uh it does it's always worth saying. Fourteen dart hold of throw for White. Gurney using all of the Yoki adjusts really well. Being cheered on here by Crash Phillips, who White actually beat in the first round. Gavin Crash Phillips, very talented player in his own right. I'm sure we'll be doing the development tour with Gurney this year as well. On the PDC side of things. A 
another. So I'm just sorting out the scorecard there. But this is a fantastic leg from both players already. I'll have to. I couldn't find in my research Gurney having done the Moda Super Series. I don't think White has either, but I would suggest that they should be ringing them up based on what I've seen this afternoon and based on what we're seeing here because there'd be great additions to that particular event. Gurney looking pretty good here. So there's a 140, leaves 60 after 12. Wyatt on a bogey. It's only a bit more about both players' routes to the final. Of course, a lot of the Challenge Tour players weren't here. Now, there's just a pause here because there's a bit of a mistake here on the score card because I think Gurney thinks he's going for 66 because that's what's written on the board. We can only go with what's written on the board. Hence why Gurney went that route. So we'll just update it now. Gurney does want four left, but it may all be elementary because White went straight at the double 17. That's a 13 dart break of throw. Very impressive. He's averaging over 100. He's only early stages, but it does give you an idea about the standard that they're playing at. Very, very impressive indeed. And White is in again. This is the kind of form he's shown all afternoon. His route to the final, well, as I say, beat Kevin Phillips in that uh, first round contest. It was a really tough draw, that. You have to feel for um, Crash there. His quarterfinals uh, beat a certain Paul Hogan, the most successful Riley's qualifier in the event's history. It's been going since 2010, remember, Riley's qualifiers, that particular route to the final. And then overcame a late comeback from Alex Harrison in his semi-final last leg decider 4-3 victor in that one White is in again this is unbelievable White being cheered on by his teammates have all travelled up together from Oxfordshire well it's being played at a, <laughs> a really, really good pace this it's hard, hard to keep up Well, White's made a slight mess of that, but looks to adjust. So 33 scored there. Gurney with an outside chance. You wouldn't put it past him. Needs a treble 19. And leaves tops if the 51 doesn't go. So White, this is a crucial part of the game. Oh, I think he thinks he wants 41, actually. So that's why he's gone that route. Again, we can only go by what's on the scoreboard. So 41, so leaves tops. That's what he's gone for. It could all be elementary because Gurney left tops after a fantastic 96 in the previous visit. And that is a missed opportunity to break back. So White wants tops. Again, we can only go by what's on the scoreboard. White holds his throw. He's under all kinds of pressure there from Gurney. 16 data. He's still averaging over 100. Gurney's playing very well as well. It's probably one of the best finals so far, if they can keep up this standard, that I've seen at one of these Riley's events over the years. Uh, a bit more information about Gurney's route to the final. Well, he beat uh, Stuart Pickles, five-time UK Open representative, and overcame Mike Gillett in the quarterfinals. He was 2-0 down, had to work hard for that one. And then he beat Sean Fox, also a former UK Open qualifier, averaging 95, 4-0, that one. And uh, we have got that on in the can, so I'll certainly broadcast and publish that one in the coming days as well, all being well. Gurney finds a treble, needed it. Because again, White is breathing down his neck. 
Gurney with the advantage here. Just as I think about it. Well, as I say, at Q School, stage one, average 95 against Adam Jenkinson. And had a, an eye-catching 95 average against Gary Blades. White now has dragged himself back into this leg. 144 won't go. That was, an, that was 88 scored. 102 needed. 10 or 16. No, two. Leaves tops. Well, it's a great checkout. It's a great checkout. I just think White might think he's... Oh, I think I think White thinks he's actually qualified with that. I think he's realised now. 102 checkout. And I, th I think he thought it was a best of seven. And I think he thought he'd done it. That's my interpretation of what's happened there. And that's perhaps seen in that 29 scored. There's no way you would celebrate that hard if if it was just in the middle of a game well it does happen doesn't it you, it does happen we have seen that before world championships joe mernon against mervyn king comes to mind and this is potentially an opening for gurney here to get back into this contest because white will be panicking will be trying to avoid panicking to some extent because he thought he'd done enough, and now he's got to regroup and try and throw some good stuff there. He seems to have regrouped now. And that's a good visit from Gurney. Again, being cheered on by... You can hear Crash Phillips in the background cheering on his friend. Which is always great to see. He's being played, being played in a good spirit. And as I say, it's been a great afternoon. The 115 participants... Advantage Gurney here, you feel, as he tries to leave a finish. Which he does do. He leaves Shanghai. 229 left for White. He's, Gurney's basically stolen the throw here. Well, this is some way to get back into the leg. And you just consider the, the emotions that White's going through to hit that 180 under that kind of pressure. It's very impressive indeed. And. Well, Gurney leaves 80 if this 49 doesn't go. And I think there's just a mistake on the scorecard because I think White thinks he has 50 left, so we can only go on that. So those are actually two tournament darts that have gone there. 80 for Gurney to drag himself back into this one and keep his hopes alive, misses top. So White wants double 10 for a place at Butlin's Minehead. Double Five. No, choose to split it. That's a gamble. Pays off, though. It pays off. Stuart White is going to the UK Open as a Riley's amateur qualifier. He wins this event at Riley's Victoria. A great performance. 94 average in the end. Commiserations to Lewis Gurney, a player very much in the ascendancy. Do watch out for him. I think he's definitely going to be one to watch. But congratulations to Stuart White, and thank you for watching.